living in dark days, but the God who is all light watches over his own. He sees through the shadows and he can see us through the most difficult seasons of life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And today on Enjoying the Journey, Scott Pauley is walking us through one of the most famous and familiar scriptures, Psalm 23, to help us get a fresh glimpse of the shepherd in the shadows. Let's join the study now in God's Word. It is a powerful thing that the shepherd king of Israel, David, viewed the Lord as his shepherd and viewed himself as a sheep. Thus the words of Psalm 23 verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We're learning that the Lord wants to lead us all, that the Lord has a plan and purpose for all of our lives, and that we must be willing to follow that plan and purpose. I wonder, are you willing to let the Lord do that in your life? Are you truly willing to let the Lord have his way with you? It's amazing to me how many of the themes in Psalm 23 show up in the other writings of David and of the other Psalms. I turn over today just for a moment to a little section in the Psalms. I was reading devotionally uh, through the Psalms again recently, and I came to this little portion of the Psalms and noticed this recurring emphasis on the sheep and the shepherd. In fact, and this is really interesting, it seems to be uh, at the end of of these psalms. It's almost like the last thought of the psalmist was again towards the shepherd. For example, Psalm 77, verse 20, Thou leddest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So he's going back in history uh, to the Lord's leading through Moses and Aaron to the people. And uh, we read instead of the Old Testament, we say, yes, the Lord certainly led them through the wilderness and the Lord knew where they were supposed to go and how to get them there. Isn't it funny, though, that we can see that in other people's lives but not practice it in our own? Are you following the Lord's leadership today through your wilderness? Are you listening to the the Moses and the Aaron God's placed in your life uh, to try to speak good counsel to you and point you to the Lord and the Lord's way? Follow the leader. And then the next Psalm, Psalm 78, listen to the end of it, beginning in verse 70. He chose David, also his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. It's a reference to David, of course, and his early work and his latter work. His early work was with a literal sheep and his latter work was with God's flock, the nation of Israel, but the work was the same in both places. It was to lead and feed to lead and feed. Are you letting the Lord lead and feed you today? Are you letting the Lord minister to your inner man and guide you step by step along the journey? And the next Psalm, Psalm 79, the last verse of it, verse 13, So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. You know, it's a funny thing about sheep, but sheep love their shepherd. Uh, their love they have for their shepherd is in response to the love of the shepherd for the sheep. So the shepherd gives his life for the sheep, and the sheep in response are devoted to their shepherd. There should be in us this heart of love and gratitude and devotion, uh, that following his leading is not a duty, not a drudgery. It's a blessing. It's the greatest blessing of all because we know the Lord will always lead us in the right path. He will always lead us where we should go and keep us from what we shouldn't be in the middle of. In my mind, I'm going back as a child to those uh, winters in the mountains of West Virginia on my grandfather's farm. And when it would snow, deep snow, uh, Grandpa and I would trudge across the snow. I can still see those big size 12 boots of his charting the course for me. And I discovered that it was always better, instead of making my own way, to put my footsteps in his footsteps. It was just easier walking, easier getting through the snow. Uh, May I say to every Christian, to every child of God, it's much easier to follow in his steps than it is to try to make your own steps. And then when you come to the next psalm, Psalm 80, here he opens with the shepherd uh, 
principle. Listen to Psalm 80, verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. So he refers to the Lord again as the shepherd. And what is the mark of the shepherd? The shepherd is leading. He's leading the flock. What is the mark that Christ has his rightful place in our lives? The answer is, we are allowing the Lord to lead us. And I ask again, is he leading you today? Well, let's begin today uh, this principle of the Lord's leading in verse number 2. The Bible says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Here's the first thing I've discovered. When you let the Lord lead, number one, he always leads you to rest and peace. Isn't that what everybody wants? It's certainly what everybody needs. Soul rest, peace. We got a world filled with conflict, a society filled with anxious people, troubled and trying to figure it out. I tell you what people need right now. They need the rest and the peace that only the shepherd can bring. In fact, if you jump down in the psalm to verse number 5, it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. <laughs> That's beautiful. In the midst of the enemies, there's rest and peace. In the, in the middle of battle, in the context of conflict, there is rest and peace. The rest and peace doesn't come to us when the conflict is over. It comes to us in the midst of the conflict. It was in the midst of the darkness and the midst of the storm that Jesus said, Peace be still. It's in the midst of the difficulty that the Lord shows up and makes his way known. And I want to pray today for me and for you. Lord, lead us to rest in peace. Give us that rest and give us that peace. He gives two parts here in verse 2. First, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So first of all, he leads us to green pastures. In that part of the world in that day, it was dry and barren land. And it took some work for the shepherd to find green pastures for the sheep, but he did it. He, he knew what the sheep needed. God knows what you need and what I need. In my reading, I discovered that sheep will not lie down if they're afraid. They will not lie down in green pastures if they're, if they're troubled. They will not lie down if there's rivalry among the flock. <laughs> they will not lie down if they're hungry or if they're tormented by pest. If anything is troubling them, they will not rest. The moment the shepherd shows up and leads them to the green pasture and makes his presence known, guess what they do? They lie down. He's giving rest. And then the second part of verse 2, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Remember, rest and peace. The word still here literally means quiet. The sheep are skittish animals, and they will not even take a drink if they fear that something near is, is dangerous. If the water is churning, they won't even drink from it. So he has to find still waters, quiet waters. And so what does our Lord do? He brings us to quietness of spirit. He doesn't calm all the noise around us, but he brings us to that place of peace where we can have our, our thirst quenched. What we truly thirst for is the Lord. You know, sheep uh, can be ignorant creatures, and they'll drink even polluted water. About any animal will do that, but the shepherd knows exactly what the sheep needs, and so he brings that sheep to green pastures and to still waters. When you let the Lord lead in your life, the Lord will do more than you ever could. He knows better than any of us do, and he always leads us to rest and to peace. If you're weary today, you need rest. If you're troubled today, you need peace. If that's you, you need the Lord. When the Lord is your shepherd, when the Lord is leading, you can truly say, I shall not want. Do you know Psalm 23? Or do you know the shepherd of Psalm 23? Our prayer is that this study will bring you to a more intimate fellowship with the shepherd. Be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, for daily encouragement. There are many resources available to help your joy. Also on our website, click the events page to see Scott's preaching itinerary. And if you live close to one of his meetings, he would be thrilled to meet you. Again, thank you for listening today. And we hope you'll join us for the next study of The Shepherd in the Shadows here on Enjoying the Journey.